Uh, okay, so uh, final protocol for chapter 10, um, the, uh, also a wireless uh, sort of thing. I don't want to leave you with the impression that all wireless protocols are really bad because we see a lot of flaws here, but it does seem to be more difficult to get the things right in wireless protocols. Okay, so GSM, this is a cell phone uh, system. Uh, not so common today, but was really popular for quite a long time. I think it's still pretty popular in some parts of the world. Um, but GSM is considered the second generation of cell phones. Okay, so what was the first generation? You know, so what's the sort of the history here? Um, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have cell phones. Okay, you know, crazy idea. You could carry your phone around with you. Uh, and when I was in college, my uh, this is like in rural Iowa, right in the middle of nowhere. My cousin, who was a salesperson, would go around to all these farmers and sell them stuff at a very rural district, you know, like half the state of Iowa or something, he had to cover. He actually had a telephone in his car. And that was like the coolest thing that he'd ever seen, you know. And it wasn't just, it wasn't anything like a cell phone today, right? I mean, it was like a phone, you know, it's like a size of a, like, I want to say a size of a brick, but actually it was like two bricks, you know, and it had the base and then the phone that goes on top and actually had a cord and everything. It was just crazy by today's standards, but back then it was pretty cool. Okay, so that was the first generation uh, cell phones. So these things had essentially no security. So when you made your call, what it would do is the first thing it would broadcast is, this is so-and-so making a call, and then you'd make your call. And the base station, right, would pick up that information, and they would make the call, and then they would send the bill to whoever, whoever it said, right? <laughs> whoever ID that was, right? So, okay, what's wrong with this picture? Yeah, anybody who listens, right, and you're sending this over the air, so anybody can snoop on this traffic, right? So anybody who sees that information about what is your ID, they can create their own phone and just claim that that's their ID, and they can make all the free phone calls they want, and who's going to get the bill? Whose ever ID it is, and whoever has that ID, are they going to pay for those phone calls? No, of course not. They're going to go and complain to the phone company, and the phone company is going to eat the charges for that, right? Okay, so this is the idea of cloning a phone. Okay, you're effectively creating a copy of the phone. And this was actually for the first generation phone. This was like a big business. People would set up a base station somewhere just to gather IDs, you know, and they would create copies of these phones and sell them and, you know, make a good business model, I guess. But it didn't last too long. So the point is the phone companies are losing money, right? It's not really even economically viable to, to do this. So they need something else. Okay, so in this environment, in 1982, uh, this French group started this uh, GSM uh, system, which now officially is known as Global System for Mobile Communications. Um, and that's what we'll talk about here. Uh, there is a third generation, which, is, uh, which we'll mention right at the end here. Uh, Uh, okay, so here's you know a GSM uh, the system overview. So you got your uh, mobile. Does anybody's mobile look like that today? I don't think so. Okay, and you got the the so-called air interface. So this is where you're actually connecting to the base station. Okay, so this is where stuff is sent over the air, where it's most susceptible. Right, anybody can listen. You know, snoop on that traffic, and that's where you have to kind of worry about you know people intercepting the information, creating clones, all that kind of stuff. Once it gets to the base station, uh, the, the, there's a so-called base station controller, which is just the, you know, the brains or the server that's keeping track of multiple base stations out here. Uh, and then you have a home network, okay? So it's not your home network. It's a network where the mobile is registered. So every mobile is registered with a particular home network. All right. So you're visiting some particular network, and there's a home network there. Okay. And there's these uh, databases. We're going to describe what's in these things. This VLR, this is in the visited network, and HLR is in your home network, and this Hawk thing. Oh, and one other thing to note here is um, this communication. Okay, the point here is that to, in order to authenticate this mobile, we're going to have to go back all the way to your home network. <coughs> Okay, that's what has the information that the authentication relies on. 
Okay, the connection that goes back from the uh, uh, cell here, the, the base station is going to, uh, or at least in the design, it goes by a, a regular telephone call. Okay, so at that point, it essentially becomes just an ordinary telephone call. All right. Uh, okay, I just love that picture of the phone. I'm never going to change that. <laughs> okay, so anyway, the mobile phone. Okay, so let's just pick, uh, look at all the pieces here. The mobile uh, phone itself uh, contains this subscriber identity module, this uh, SIM card. So this is like, uh, the idea is this is sort of tamper resistant. You know, people can take it out and look at it, but they can't get at the information that's in there, and in particular what's in there. It has to be some sort of ID and some sort of key, okay? So the ID and the key are in there. Okay, the ID is known as the MC, International Mobile Subscriber ID, MC. Uh, and the key, for some reason, is universally known as KI. Not K sub I, KI, so we'll use that. It's a 128-bit uh, key. Okay, so the ID, ID is not you know, considered secrets like your username. The key, that's like your password, right? That's the important thing. So if you're Trudy, what do you want to know here? Key. key. If you can get KI, you can clone the phone. Okay, so how do we prevent the cloning from happening? Oh, and these things also uh, have a pen, right? Pen, but nobody ever uses that, so forget that for adding any security here. Uh, okay, how about... Okay, how about the uh, visited network? Um, that's wherever the phone is located when you make a call. So we're assuming this is the guy making the call, right? Okay, so wherever that's located. The base station is one, one cell here, and the controller, the base station controller, can manage you know, several cells at once. Uh, okay, well, the database here, the visitor location registry, this has, so, so the base station or the base station controller has to keep track of who, who's currently connected and that's what it's for, okay? It's just keeping track of that sort of information, who's currently in this, uh, uh, in this network. The home network, um, again, each mobile's registered with a particular home network and the point of that is the information in the cell, right? Your phone has this MC, your ID, right, the MC, and a key, KI. Okay, that information has to be known somewhere in order to authenticate you. Where that information is stored? In the home network. And it's stored in this uh, database we call AUK, the Authentication Center. So it has that MCKI pair. There's another kind of uh, interesting thing here at the home network. There's this uh, so-called HLR, Home Location Registry. So this has the location, the most recent location that you've placed a call from. Now, why would the uh, why why would this be something important to keep? Why would they build this into the system? Just to make sure you have no privacy, right? No. Why would they do this? So, if location changes too uh, quickly or something like. That's a good point. Okay, I mean, suppose your cell phone makes a call, you know, somewhere in Europe, uh, and five minutes later makes a call somewhere in South America. Okay, you know, there's something wrong here, right? Okay, it's probably been cloned. You know, we could look into some phones here. So it makes sense to have something like that. Okay, now you have to remember again, first generation cell phones, essentially no security. The companies are losing money, so they have to figure out a new system. Okay, now. What are the goals here? What are the overriding uh, goals here? Well, okay, from, for, as far as security goes, what they wanted to do um, was make the GSM system as secure as a regular telephone call. Does this sound familiar? Yeah. Okay, so again, they're sort of setting their sights very low, right? Now, you know, think of from kind of a business perspective, a marketing <coughs> perspective, as long as you can convince your, cons your consumers this is as good as a regular phone call, why would anybody not use it? So, you know, it's sort of logical, I guess, in a sense. But this is the big one, okay? They want to make money. The way they make money is to stop cloning, okay? So, prevent cell phone cloning. In particular, how do you prevent cloning? And you really have to have an authentication system, right? You have to have a good authentication <coughs> protocol. That's uh, 
Uh, in particular, they didn't worry too much about active attacks or any uh, a lot of more sophisticated kinds of attacks uh, because uh, at the time they considered them impractical. Some of these, as we'll see, are actually pretty practical today, so it's probably a little short-sighted to do that. Uh, and they looked mostly at kind of low-tech attacks. That was their biggest concern. Okay, now there's three.